the last group of problems to discuss are inclined plane problems and those that include friction especially. So normal force, just always think normal force as being perpendicular. And like, like on a horizontal surface, we said normal force and gravity were the same. But on inclined planes, they are not. Gravity goes straight down. Normal force is going to be perpendicular to the surface. So when we look at the math of inclined planes, you're going to see some differences. So gravity, even though it goes straight down, is we can make two components. We can make in a component that is going to be what we call force perpendicular or force of gravity in the vertical. Why? And then you have your parallel force. Force parallel, which is also the same as force gravity of x, because it's the horizontal version with this being vertical. The other thing about our perpendicular force, because we can also say it's the same as our normal force, because that is going to be what's going to be up and down. So the force of gravity isn't, but the force of gravity component of y, or the perpendicular component, is the same as normal force. So the equations for this, force of perpendicular is normal force. So it's mass times g times cosine of theta, with theta being the angle of our incline. The parallel component, okay, it's going to be the x component. I'm, I'm going to call it fg of x a lot. The parallel component is mg mass times g times the sine of theta, or the, thi the, the sine of our incline. And just remember, normal force and perpendicular are the same. Now, in the absence of friction and other forces, if we wanted to find the acceleration, we take we would take g times the sine of theta, and we'd find the acceleration of our object. But we don't see a lot of problems with those on there. So here's an example of a of an inclined plane problem. We got a force acting on a uh, 100 kilogram crate that's sliding down an inclined plane. The plane the plane is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees, so we have a 30 degree incline and the coefficient of friction is 0.3. And we want to determine net force and acceleration of the, of the crate. So here's what we do. First step is always find your force of gravity. Mass times g. Mass is 100, g is 98. The force of gravity is going to be 980 newtons. Now to find our normal force, it's the same as finding our force perpendicular, right? It's the force of gravity, mg, times the cosine of theta. So I take 980 times the cosine of our angle, which is 30, and we get a normal force of 849. And that's going to be our normal force. Now, if we want to find this, the, the um, parallel component, which I call fg of x, we take our force of gravity, mg, times the sine of theta. So we take 980 times the sine of 30, and we get 490. So we know that we get 490 newtons of force pulling this block down. Friction's pushing back. The force of friction is normal force times mu. The normal force we have figured is 849 newtons. We multiply it by 0.3, which is our coefficient of friction, and we get a force of friction of 255. Now, the force of friction is going up the incline because the object is moving down the incline. So if the object is moving down, friction opposes motion. Friction goes that way. Now, if we know we got 490 going down and 255 pushing back, we can find our net force by subtracting those. So we got 490 and 255. So we take 490 minus 255 and we get a net force of 235 newtons. Once we know our net force, we can plug into F equals MA our mass is 100, solve for acceleration. So 235 is equal to 100A. 235 divided by 100 gives us 2.35 meters per second squared as our acceleration. So I'm going to draw one here so you can see the drawing. And we have an object with a mass of 4.5 kilograms. It has an incline of 36 degrees. 
in a coefficient of friction of mu of 0.548. We want to find the acceleration. First step, as always, find gravity. We know our mass and we know g, so 4.5 times 9.8 gives us a, a force of gravity of 44.1 newtons. Normal force goes upward, it wants to slide down this way, so that means friction is going that way. So to find our normal force, we just find the perpendicular component of our gravity because they're on the same plane. That's just the force of gravity, our 44.1 times the cosine of theta. So 44.1 times the cosine of our angle, which is 36 degrees, gives us a normal force of 35.7 newtons. Once we know that, we can then find our parallel component which is the force of gravity, which we said is 44.1 times the sine of theta, which is the sine of 36, because that's our angle. So we're finding this, and we get 25.9. So 25.9 newtons is, is what gravity's forcing down the incline. To find the force of friction that pushes backwards, we have to take normal force times mu. Our normal force, as we previously solved for, is 35.7 newtons. We multiply it by our given coefficient of friction of 0.548 to get a force of friction of 19.6 newtons. So to find our net force, we take our force of gravity in the x, which is 25.9, and we just subtract the friction that's opposing it of 19.6, and we get 6.3 newtons. We substitute that into Newton's second law, F equals ma, and we get 6.3 newtons is equal to our mass of 4.5 times a, divide both sides by 4.5, and we get an acceleration of 1.4 meters per second squared, going down the slope. One more problem to show you with the, this inclined plane type problem, and we have our box. It's sliding down an inclined plane with a 29.1 degree incline at a constant speed of 2.1 meters per second okay constant speed means acceleration is zero so think about the assumptions we can make first step as always find the force of gravity we take our mass and we multiply it by 9.8 and we get a force of gravity of 405 newtons now we're working with friction so we have to find normal force remember normal force is just the perpendicular component of our gravity on this on the surface so if I look at it this way I take my force of gravity times the cosine theta so I take 405 newtons times the cosine of 29.1 because that's our angle of incline and we get a normal force of 354 newtons now we have to think about what's going on on our incline we have a force of gravity going down so the the parallel component of gravity forcing it down with friction pushing back because our acceleration zero friction and our force our, our parallel force our force g of x will also be the same so i just got to solve one time to get the force of friction and the force of gx and it's the force of g times the sine of theta i know gravity is 405 newtons times the sine of 29.1 and we punch those numbers in and we get a force parallel of 197 newtons which means our force of friction because we're not accelerating is also 197 newtons so now I take my force of friction and put it into the friction equation 197 equal to our normal force of 354 times mu divide both sides by 354 and we get a mu of 0.556 that's our coefficient of friction now this last problem um, is a more of an advanced problem, but I wanted to show it to you just in case you run into something like this somewhere. Um, so you got two masses on a pulley. One mass is on an inclined plane while the other mass is just hanging there. You got mass 1 and you got mass 2. Mass 1 is a, has a mass of 10 kilograms. Mass 2 has a mass of 30 kilograms. And we want to find the acceleration if mu is 0.4. Now mu is only affecting mass 1, not mass 2. And we want to find the tension in the string. 
So it's a two-body problem with friction. So first step is I want to take M2 and draw a free body diagram. And I know there's only two things acting on M2, force of gravity and tension in the string. Remember, tension in the string is the same throughout the string. So the tension on M2 is going to be the same as the tension on M1. So now I know that since I'm accelerating downward, I'm going to assume that a 30 kilogram uh, will pull this thing in this direction. So that's the way it's going to go. That M2 gravity is going to be greater than tension. So my net force is going to be Fg minus Ft. And that's going to equal Ma. So what do I know? Well, I can find the force of gravity. Mass times G. So 30 times 9.8 minus Ft equals Ma. So 294 is 30 times 9.8 minus Ft equals my mass, which is 30. And that's A. So I'm going to... Uh, t take this and make it in terms of FT and I get FT is equal to 294 minus 3A. Okay, so FT is 294 minus 3A. Now I look at my M1 and draw a free body diagram. Remember gravity goes down. Normal force is perpendicular and there's going to be a couple things. You're going to have tension but you're also going to have friction. And then going down, you're going to have your parallel force or your FG of X. <coughs> so this M1 is going to move in that direction, which means FT and force of friction, tension and friction, are going to be added together. And we're going to subtract our parallel force, which is we're going to call FG of X. And that's going to equal MA. So here's my equation for M1. Now, Things I can figure out. Well, I can find force of friction. It's mu times normal force. Normal force is the same as the perpendicular uh, component of gravity, which is mg cosine theta. So if I go mu mg cosine theta, I can find frictional force. So then I just plug numbers in. Coefficient of friction is 0.4. My mass is 10. G is 9.8. And I take the cosine of 28. I put all those numbers in, and I get a frictional force of... 34.6 newton. So I know frictional force. Now I want to find this uh, Fg of x, and that's going to be the parallel component, which is mg times the sine of theta, mass times g, mass is 10, g is 9.8, sine of my angle 28 equals 46. So I have 46 newtons pulling down on it. So now I go back to my original equation. And I substitute 34.6 for friction, negative 46 or minus 46 for my uh, my parallel component, and then from the first from my first equation where Ft is equal to 294 minus 30a, I substitute that in for Ft to get this, and then that's equal to the mass of one, which is 10 times its acceleration. I then do some algebra. Isolate my a's on the right side, I get 282.6 is equal to 40a, divide both sides by 40, and I find the acceleration of this whole system to be 7.1 meters per second squared. Very difficult problem. Um, if you have any questions about how I did that, I tried to type it out for you so I didn't have to draw it so you could read it better. But uh, look at it, write it down again, and if you see a problem like this, which there could be something similar on the mastering, I would not put it past Ivy Tech. Uh, make sure you um, look at this as a guide and also come to me. Um, Hyperphysics, which I'll point you out to, has some really good sample problems too if you want to see how those are worked out.